Good afternoon, Casey Johnson here, uh, strategic advisor at CPA.com, and we are at the executive roundtable that AICPA and CPA.com hosts each year in our beautiful New York City offices. And today I have with me my friend and colleague, Jen Wilson from Convergence Coaching. Welcome, Jen. Hi, thanks. Glad to be here. So, um, Jen, you know, we're here talking about technology and exponential change and rapid, you know, everything is changing so fast. What are you seeing with firms and more importantly, their clients? How are they adapting? Well, you know, it's all over the map. How about that? And uh, and I guess not as fast as I'd like to see. Um, I do think that there are sort of two, you know, there are external forces driving change in technology. And you mentioned clients, uh, next gen clients are especially you know, their desire for more digital services and their um, more more digital interface and communication and that sort of thing, that's driving change. So firms that are focused on next-gen clients, they're focused on digital transformation and we're seeing progress there. Um, and that's uh, in things like uh, digitizing their sales process. Simple things, you know, like how do we interact with our clients, not just how do we deliver services or how do we provide them deliverables digitally instead of paper-based and all those things. Mm -hmm. Uh, but also how do we have digital services like crypto asset uh, services or um, ERP selection uh, back to that, you know? Uh, so we're seeing some firms get it, but a lot of firms are struggling and wondering, is this something we really need to do now? Is this all hype? Can we wait? Um, and unfortunately, some of those uh, firms are lagging and it, it's troubling. And do you feel that their hesitation is due to feeling overwhelmed because they're, I mean, between blockchain and AI, I mean, there's always something to keep up with. Is it that they're overwhelmed? Is it that they still have just too much work? Uh, what is, what's kind of, and I'm sure there's multiple components, but. Right. Yeah. So for sure, overwhelmed, mm -hmm. no questions asked. Uh, that's a piece. And like, uh, if we do it, which, where do we do it? Which one, you know, where which one, start? where, where yeah. should we place our bets? Um, so that's one. Um, I think a bigger one is, hey, wait a minute, we have a business here that's based in audit and uh, tax and accounting, maybe. Um, do we really need to do this? Do our clients really want it? Can we survive without it? It's kind of hard to learn this stuff. Why would we bother? Uh, there's a whole generation of, um, of accountants who are close to retirement, you know, 57, 58 to 65 in that range. And they're sitting around thinking, mm, I don't want to, you know, I don't know if I want to. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so I think it's a, it's a combination of those things. Yeah. So if you had to place your bet, what would you say looking at emerging technologies and the big trends, what do you think is going to have the biggest impact at least in the next 10 years? Oh gosh. Um, I, I have to say data is everything. Um, so anything related to data, anything and everything, um, firms data is terrible for the most part, disparate, uh, not integrated, um, you know, uh, so how can I use my data better as a firm uh, to uh, better reach my next generation clients, to better personalize their experiences, to um, uh, serve them up services they need that they don't know they need yet, but we have the data that would show it does. So right. I think that's uh, I, anything related to data science, data extraction, um, you know, uh, data analysis, data insights. And that means then artificial intelligence would be my next bet. Um, but artificial intelligence is nothing if we don't figure out data. And a lot of firms haven't figured out their own, let alone how to manage their clients' data or what to do with that data. Mm -hmm. So that's where I would put my bets. Well, I think that'd be a smart bet. In fact, yesterday we were talking about IoT here. We actually had um, a faculty member from Singularity University come in, Dr. David Bray, and he, he talked with us about IoT. And he even said it all goes back to the data, whether you're talking about AI, whether you're talking about blockchain, IoT, what, whatever it is, it comes back to the data. Um, and we're, we know that some of the most coveted roles right now for firms are data scientists. I mean, are you seeing that trend? Are people getting enough of that talent in? Well, I mean, it depends on the firm size. I think small uh, to mid-sized firms could say, wow, we can never afford to hire a data scientist. So those firms, I say, well, let's partner with an external data analytics firm. Let's find a partner. Let's make friends locally. Let's get them in and do a project with them. Let's just start with the project and let it be one of your firm databases, like your tax database. Maybe they could, uh, you know, run some analytics on it and provide you some insights about your own tax clients that would really help you run your tax practice better. Mm -hmm. um, let's learn about it by, you know, working on our own data with a partner. 
And then once we really get the feel of what that is, then we can start to say, well, could you teach us? You know, are there people on our team that could be taught by our external partner? Um, maybe, maybe that's how we're going to build this skill. Um, and I think it is a combination of building the skills of the existing people and hiring outside help, whether it be contract help at first or ultimately making that investment in a data scientist or data analyst. Yeah. Um, the other piece of it, and this is going to sound super tactical, but um, a lot of firms don't have enough administrative help to have clean data. Um, they, they don't have data stewards. They just have a data lake and yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they just, uh, nobody values data. I mean, it's, uh, the biggest, uh, when, you know, one of the things I tease firms about is we can't even get people to get good email addresses. You know, you know, we're still talking about that. And so like having admin resources that keep data clean, keep it updated, um, you know, make sure the databases match if we can't get integration. Um, you know, and that would be one of my biggest asks of the people at the AICPA, uh, some of here, this whole conversation that we're having around technology, those vendors, hey guys, work together. Let's integrate this stuff. Let's open up our APIs. Let's get our data to talk to one another. Let's stop having proprietary databases. Uh, that's part of what holds firms back. And um, and I would love to see, you know, if we could integrate, we wouldn't need as many data stewards to do data entry, but firms are going to have to invest more in data people uh, and even lower cost admin uh, folks. Um, I think that's part of the solution. Absolutely. And that's part of why we're here and what this event is. We convene um, about 65 C-suite executives from the technology companies that are actually servicing the profession. So one of the goals there is to get them all, we call it fueling co-opetition. So uh, getting them all to work a little bit better together, build stronger um, integrations so that it's a better solution for the firms. And um, how do you think, not necessarily just the ones here today, there's about 700 vendors yes. <laughs> servicing the profession, but uh, how overall do you think that they're doing with this? Well, um, you know, I mean, we're encouraged. Certainly, I think if we look at um, the client accounting space, mm -hmm. I think that that is a, like a really healthy ecosystem of technology vendors who are trying to figure out how to work together. A lot um, of opening APIs yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, so um, I think we could do a whole lot better on the tax side and a whole lot better on the audit side. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, and, and our big vendors, the big guys, the big practice management guys, they really need to, um, to open up and embrace more. You know, they continue to try to be sort of one-stop shopping. Um, a lot of firms are not, you know, they, they want to work with a, a lot of different vendors. And we need to have that integration into those big practice management suites in order for these firms to really uh, realize all the potential. Um, but I've been really impressed, uh, as you have done this roundtable for years now, with uh, what comes out of it afterwards. You know, that not just the conversations at the roundtable, but the partnerships that form, seeing these startups, yeah. you know, really be embraced by some of the larger legacy vendors and, um, and seeing... Uh, the ideas come together to help serve firms and their clients. It's, you know, I think what you're doing here is really amazing. Oh, well, good. Thank you. And, and it is a very unique event. And you said about some of the younger companies and this year, our freshman class, I mean, the ones that are just being so innovative and it's such young talent that are these founders of the companies that we're seeing here um, this week. It's, uh, it's encouraging. Um, and it's actually inspiring too. I know. Um, I anything stand out to you that you saw here that maybe you weren't expecting? Well, I mean, I just, uh, I've, I've attended this a few times and, you know, I remember the little tiny startup Expensify, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and how successful they are now. And, and I feel like I saw them enter the CPA space at this, at this round table. And so um, I felt like I saw several vendors that could be the next big thing. I don't want to try to uh, promote yeah. by name here, but um, it was exciting to see their enthusiasm and also the homework they've done about the accounting space, which I think a lot of technology vendors kind of, uh, they miss that step. Uh, you know, they don't mm -hmm. understand um, uh, the profession and, and the firm's challenges. And I just was really impressed with that. Yeah. Um, like you said, there are a lot of maybe older Gen Z or young millennials here uh, running these companies. And I'm um, always excited to see people that aren't encumbered sort of by um, already always all the past stuff. Absolutely. And um, I'm excited to see these guys come in and, and implement these technologies. I hope it happens. Uh, I think that's, you know, if we could make the work smarter, faster, easier for these firms, 
eliminate sort of the grunt work or the ditch digging inside of uh, some of this compliance work um, and really get to better level insights that clients value. You know, that's the stuff I started to see might happen from these vendors and I'm encouraged. No, it's exciting. Um, so one of our other goals here is to help the solution providers to better understand the profession, the real um, evolution of firms and what their pain points are today. If you could go into that room and just have them all walk away with understanding one thing about firms, what would it be? I think it's that um, we have to start always in classic change management with a nucleus of change. Mm. Um, I think that sometimes technology vendors get really frustrated by the pace of change inside these firms. Um, and, and they don't realize that we're not just going to have wholesale adoption, that we're going to start with an early, early nucleus, that we've got to find the early adopters and innovators, um, not just the firms that will early adopt, but also inside the firms, the innovators and early adopters. And to start with those nucleus, um, you know, folks make the change happen with them and then really, um, you know, promote uh, public relations that change through to others, um, that it is kind of a conga line in most firms and that you have to start somewhere and then bring it along to the other guys and not be frustrated if you hear language at the partner table that some people are dissenting or, or you know, that there are people that aren't agreeing with it or whatever. That's normal. And uh, you're not going to get everybody to say, let's do it all at once. There will be resistance and not to be stopped by it. And I have to wonder, and I think you and I have talked about this at a at, at maybe the Thought Layer Symposium or somewhere, but at what point do we leave those laggards behind? I mean, you can't keep pulling yes. at a certain point. We have to, at what point do we, we cut off and say, we're spending too much energy trying to pull? Well, uh, twofold. First, firm-wide, if I'm these technology vendors, I'm going to have a very clear ideal target client, mm -hmm. and I'm going to figure out who those people are that are likely to be left behind by their own um, lack of foresight or unwillingness to change. Those won't be our ideals. We won't market to them. We won't try to, to get in there, right? Mm -hmm. So um, so that's something these guys are going to have to figure out for sure. Uh, but, but if I'm in a firm, and I'm trying to drive change, and there's these laggards that are, you know, continuing to bang the drum call. I don't know why we're doing this, and uh, maybe you can do this after I retire. Um, you know, at some point, corporate governance has to take hold and say, "Listen, our future is next gen clients and next gen talent, and our future is going to be impacted by the technology market forces. The reality that all of this technology is going to um, uh, cause us, force us to change. So we're going to make these changes, and if you don't come along," then we're going to have to part ways right. or you're going to be impacted on comp or you're, you know, you can't be part of the equity ownership anymore because you're just not part of the solution or part of the future. Um, I think that's how, how we start sort of saying enough is enough. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we can't start there when you're talking about a blockchain practice, you can't start there. You have to say, well, some people are going to say, I don't even get blockchain. I don't know why we do it. I don't know about crypto assets, you know, maybe all that stuff. Um, expect that um, and then go ahead and still start up the practice and and give those people the empowered you know support they need um, keep reminding them that some of this negative resistance talk you know that to not be bothered by it and then ultimately as they start to have success if others don't come on board and and don't want to support it and they continue to fight against it you know maybe they shouldn't continue to be part of the firm if, if technology is part of our future and it is it, there's no question it is yeah, but it, to have that self-realization, I actually did a session on yeah. blockchain in uh, Arizona and a gentleman raised his hand and he said, you just convinced me to retire 10 years earlier. <laughs> so I mean, at least you have the self-realization. You don't want to deal with it. Uh, yeah, um, I have the same thing when I talk, when we teach trends, we, we have people, you know, say, I'm not sure I want to go there. Yeah. You know, and we say, well, then let's figure out an exit strategy. You know, that's okay. It's okay yeah, to have, absolutely. you know, to determine this is your place to exit. It's okay. Uh, but but if the firm's going to have sustainability and value in the future, and if it's going to have clients, uh, there's a statistic out there that says that in the U.S., by 2025, 75% of the U.S. workforce will be millennial. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, that's your talent, that's your clients in 2025, that's only five years from now, they're going to expect digital um, everything. And if you're not passionate about it, you know, you're just 
kind of forcing it. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So to end on a more positive note, we have just entered a new decade, 2020, um, new year. What are you most excited for? Gosh, uh, well, I'm really excited because we're seeing so many uh, future leaders take key positions in firms as CEO, as department heads in audit and tax um, and client accounting. We're seeing these you know, young people we've known for a long time step into these jobs and start to lead. And that's something that's, uh, you know, it's going to be exciting to see what they do. Uh, they've had wonderful uh, mentoring and, um, and been positioned now. And so let's see what they're going to do with that. I'm very excited to see, um, you know, really artificial intelligence and data analytics take um, and begin to play a bigger role in, in everything we're doing, mm -hmm. you know, everything uh, from our mobile devices to, um, you know, to the applications we're using inside our firms, you know, how they're going to um, make our information better, make our communication better. I'm excited about that, too. As long as the phones aren't listening when we don't want them to. <laughs> <laughs> and they are. So check your privacy settings weekly for real on your phone and uh, and your uh, smart television, especially if you have one in your bedroom. And the remote. Um, now and we, the learned remote. Yeah, we learned yesterday your remote's listening to you, too. If it's, I think he said if it was designed after 2015. Um, so, uh scary. Uh, but, um, you know, I mean, I, I'm less, I'm less afraid than I am excited. There's a ton of opportunity here. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with us, Jen. You are such a tremendous asset to add to the conversation and give these um, solution providers a different perspective. So say thank you for being here. Thanks for inviting me. All right. Thank you.